Sen Karn. Hello, hello everyone, it's Sen Karn again here, bringing you another video. And boy guys, do I have something for you today. Or today for you. Or however you may say it in English. I'm not quite sure, even though I was born and raised in England. Yes, my English is amazing. Yes! So, what I have in front of me here is actually a fully automatic sand generator. Now, you might have already seen uh, Test 13729's design, where he uses TNT minecarts, but you only get a certain amount of um, runs th run through of that because the TNT minecart sort of goes in and then it breaks into a normal minecart and a bit of TNT so you need to go back and recraft all these TNT minecarts and put them back into the system so it's not fully automatic however this design is completely 100% fully automatic so in this chest we actually gather up our sand and it is very slow, it is much slower than the original sand generators, yet you could probably uh, speed this up for about, ooh, I would say, five times the speed, probably, if you just knew how to do it correctly. Um, I'll have to look into that myself, but... This is still only the proof of concept video. So, how does this crazy contraption work? Well, it's actually quite simple. But to actually fully explain it, I'm going to have to go into the overworld and um, show you a couple of things first. So, let's hop over there. So we're going to start off with this little circuit here. Now, just ignore the end portal down there um, for now, and let's just pay attention to this right here. Okay, so we just have a regular piston here and another regular piston there. Um, this piston is permanently powered. So when we put the sand there, it's you know, resting on top of this piston. So when this piston retracts, the sand will become an entity. And then this piston will push that sand block over a bit. And now, it won't be pushed directly to this spot. It'll actually be pushed sort of half over this, and then also half over this air block. Now what happens when the sand entity does this, is it breaks. So we can watch this in action by doing that. You see, the sand entity came down, sort of landed uh, just on the corner here, and thus the sand entity broke into an item form. Now you might be wondering, well, what the hell has this got to do with anything? Well, the point is that when it does this, yet there's an end portal right here as well, some interesting stuff starts to happen. So, as we know, the sand entity would have broke into an item entity, but at the same time, it disappeared and went into the end. So when we ourselves go into the end, we can actually see what happened. What happened was, the item entity itself dropped in through the portal, and it was just sort of lying on the ground like this. However, then there was also the sand entity itself, that had been just taken up by the portal, and it gets summoned right in the centre of the portal here. So in fact, we've just duplicated the sand, because we have in fact got one item entity and one block of sand. So we have two pieces of sand. Now, the next thing to note is we can actually push this sand block with pistons, 
and we can push it into another end portal. Now I can't place an end portal here, I'll actually need to go ahead and kill the dragon. But I can't actually be bothered to do that at the moment, so I'll just show you that in my test world. But we can literally take this sand block, we can push it along with pistons, and then into our end portal, where the um you know, where after we kill the dragon it drops an end portal and we can push the sand block and make that sand block fall into the end portal. Now, that sand block, when it passes through the end portal, will spawn in the spawn chunks. It will spawn at your spawn again. And then, from there, we can take that sand block and transport it all the way back to the end portal. So, in effect, we have just duplicated the sand and also set up our sand ready to be duplicated again. So, when the sand block passes through the end portal in this other world, it will actually land right on this block here. Now, what happens then? Well, we have this redstone torch passing through a block, well, this bit of redstone here will be powered. And thus, firstly, that bottom piston up there will get powered. It'll push up, and then this piston will get powered, which will push this along. And then we have this same setup here, and the sand will get pushed down and then into this end portal frame. And the same thing will happen again, right? So, let's have a look. We spawn the sand. It gets pushed, it breaks, but it also goes through the portal. In this world, we have this setup right here. So I'll show you exactly why we need this in a second. But essentially, the sand block spawns in in the center of the platform, and then we use this five piston extender to push this sand block back out down here and then into this end portal here. Now, this is one I've actually spawned in. The actual one is way over there in the distance. Now, there was a slight issue with this because Endermen that were spawning on the island were actually just coming along and picking up these sand blocks. So, of course, you would need to put over this a whole, like, you know, a water system. So, if any Endermen try and take these sand blocks, they'll just get completely repelled by the water. And what I mean by that is you basically you just sort of put water along like this. And um, without destroying all the redstone, of course. And essentially, if a Enderman tries to come along and um, take their sand, yeah, he won't have a chance because that water's there. So that's what I mean by a quote-unquote water system. And that would be vital, but I couldn't actually be bothered to do that for this long rail here. So I just went into MC Edit and spawned in another end portal right there. Now, as we know, that sand entity will just get thrown out, right? When it comes through the portal, the sand item entity, you know, this one, will actually just get thrown out onto the ground here, and we can actually see it. You see these like little sporadic bits of, um, of the item just hopping out? That's the actual item entity um, broken by the end portal frame in the real world, right? And then this block here, this full entity, or, or the actual block itself, is from, you know, is from the, the, the sand, the falling sand entity, going through the end, of end portal itself. So then what happens to that sand item entity? Well, as you see, it disappears. And the reason why it disappears is under the uh, obsidian platform here, we just have a series of hopper minecarts, which just suck the items from above this down, and then through these hoppers here, and then into our chest here. Pretty cool, huh? Now, you might be wondering, why on earth 
why on earth do you have firstly these pistons up here and why don't you just use I don't know maybe a piston itself if I can get one um <laughs> you know basically directly adjacent to the sand block pushing it away and the reason is that whenever the sand sand comes through the, the whole end portal clears and this is due to the fact that if you go, if you come into the end and let's say the end island for example is in the way for the first time when you come into the end then the game will automatically generate a room for you to spawn in. Um, basically a room of air blocks. So it deletes all the blocks within this region. And how far do, does this region span? Well, we'll actually see that it actually spans up to these blocks here. So it's in fact, uh, what, one, two, th one, two, three high regions right and this means that we can't have any redstone in this three high region and therefore we actually have to use pistons from above pushing redstone blocks in order to extend this triple this uh, uh, pentable pentable piston extender as um, I guess would be the best way of calling it now this brings some technical difficulties and I'm currently getting um, a few redstone geniuses, I guess you could call them, to um, see if, well, I challenge them anyway, to see if they can make this system work and make this pentipple piston extender actually extend and retract. However, currently, that is not the case, so I am merely using these command blocks to reset the position of the pistons, and these command blocks to reset air blocks in these positions. And so, for this, currently, I just have uh, this setup here. So, we have this clock and then we just go into this line we have four ticks on this repeater, one tick, one tick um, this, these two pistons are activated at the same time and then after what, four, eight, twelve, fifteen, sixteen ticks so after sixteen ticks this line of redstone will come on and uh, reset all these pistons back to the, how they were at the beginning So all in all, so all in all, this is a decent design. It produces a fair bit of sand. It doesn't produce sand very quickly, but if you can kind of imagine just leaving this system on, gradually accumulating sand over the period of like months, and yeah, it well as you can see, it works pretty much completely fine. So there is no big deal with it. I would say this is a pretty good design. And I guess I should note that this is the first of its kind. It is fully automatic. Now let me just have a little um, talk about how overpowered this actually is. Okay so firstly we're going to go into the setup costs of this. Firstly we're going to need this piston extender which in itself isn't going to be cheap there's going to have to be a lot of redstone behind this to actually get it working we're also going to need a piston extender which goes all the way from your spawn platform all the way to where you killed the ender dragon so all the way over to your end portal over here now that may be that sort of depends on where you actually kill the dragon so, you know, if you're clever and you kill it near your platform, then that journey might be shorter. But it's still a factor. So, for this sort of contraption, you're also going to need quite a lot of redstone. Um, and, yeah, 
just a lot of redstone to push all the sand along the way to your end portal. Now, in your overworld, you're probably not going to have your... Yeah, so in your um, overworld, you're probably not going to have your end portal right next to your spawn, right? So, you also have to create another line that transports your sand from spawn all the way to your end portal, wherever that may be. So with all these things taken into account, I would say that this isn't actually a very overpowered system. It is one of its kind, and it is fully automatic, and it does give you infinite sand. However, you require a lot, and I mean a lot, of redstone to actually do it. Now one of the final things I'd like to note, you actually saw there was some sand just on the side here and I'll just go ahead and tell you the reason behind that if I hop over through here. So you'll notice sometimes that this sand here hops over and it comes into this water stream now, I added this water stream because sometimes some bits of sand, which were landing like right on the very edge here, weren't getting picked up by the hopper minecarts. So, I have this water current here, which redirects the items down and into this end portal. So, any stray items will literally just flow straight into the end portal. You could also just scrap this whole system and guide all the items through the end portal. Um, that's also a possibility, but I don't really see the, that there being much point in that. Anyway guys, that's my system. That is my concept for a fully automatic sand farm. Now, there are still a couple of bits that need some work. For example, making this um, pentiple uh, piston extender work without the need of command locks. Um, that's going to be the main thing in this design and the whole system doesn't really work without it so there you go guys um, this is the design this is the concept anyway for the design and I hope you enjoyed this video like this video favorite this video spread it around get those red stoners to actually try and make this piston extender a thing in survival minecraft and well that's it for today guys see you in the next video